10 standard exams are coming up all of you are might be busy with your preparation and you are under a lot of pressure so here i'm going to discuss about how to overcome this exam phobia stress or a pressure but first we are going to discuss about what is the exam fever or a stress see as the exam arrives there is a lot of a discussion about exam around us exam date sheet or the list of important topics countdown to the exams then prelim practice paper results we keep on discussing about so many things and that increases the stress on us now let us see the causes for exam phobia or stress first one is a fear of scoring less marks in a test the in fear of letting down the hopes of a parents and a teachers most of the times what happens parents have a lot of expectations from their wards and that creates unnecessary burden on a student and therefore they loses a confidence in a subject inability to focus or memorize while studying comparison with other students हम लोग बहुत बार अपना साथ में जो पढ़ने वाले हैं, वी कीप ऑन कंपेरिंग आवर सेल्फ विद देम दैट माय फ्रेंड हैज स्टडीड दिस मच ही हैज कंप्लीटेड दिस मेनी सब्जेक्ट पर डे ही स्टडीइंग फॉर दिस मेनी आवर्स एंड दैट क्रिएट्स अननेसेसरी बर्डन अपॉन अस सो वी हैव टू अवॉइड दिस कंपैरिजन सो वी कैन अवॉइड द एग्जाम स्ट्रेस नाउ लेट अस सी द सिम्टम्स ऑफ एग्जाम फोबिया first one is a fear then extreme nervousness bahut bar tension aake mujhe nervous lagne lagta hai at the time of exam this causes a lot of sweating in a palms that is called as a sweaty palms it causes also a stomach pain headache some people feel like running nose when the exams comes over there then dizziness rapid heart beat as well as the panic attacks how to overcome exam stress first step is what timetable making then study plan creation then you go for a revision last minute preparation notes making for example if you are studying physics biology then you have to draw their diagrams then for history you have to write events the name important person names on separate papers you have to prepare the maps in geography when it comes to chemistry you have to write down reactions you have to use even mnemonics methods to remember certain things so these notes will help will be helpful to you during your exam days for last minute revision while making a timetable how to plan a day try to understand you have to keep a 8 to 10 hours for sleeping because a sound sleep is very important that will make you to feel fresh while studying then you have to keep 4 to 5 hours reserved for studying it may vary this is minimum 4 to 5 hours i am saying it will vary with student then you have to keep even recreation and entertainment time that means you can watch a half an hour tv show or you can listen your favorite music this will help you to overcome the stress it will help you to relax yourself when it comes to the preparation one common question arises which is a suitable time for a study whether it is morning or a evening okay i will say morning is an ideal time to memorize the formula in maths then physics chemistry reactions etc but some people prefer night also so it's up to your routine whatever habit you have from so many years that only you have to follow at the time of exam do not try to change your habits all of a sudden now one more important thing what is the proper way to study whether to use a study table or to study it on the 
bead see this is the correct method as you are going to appear for exam you should have a habit of sitting two or three hours at one place so it's better to use a study table and not to study in a bed like this because what will happen if you try to study in a bed definitely after some time you will feel sleepy and at the time of exam you will not find yourself to be comfortable to sit at one place how to make a study plan for that first you understand the syllabus number of days remaining for the exam that will be very important then how many chapters you have to study that you count then understand the exam pattern most of the times you will get a sample paper from your board you go through it so you will be able to understand the exam pattern understand the board timetable this will be very helpful to you when uh, you want to study during your exams if there is any gap that can be uh, used for proper preparation of the subject here is the exam pattern for maths you can see it is divided into seven units and mark distribution is also given the number system it includes two chapters there are six marks algebra it has a three chapters which will be asked for 20 marks coordinate geometry will be asked for six marks then geometry part will be asked to you for 15 marks and trigonometry will be asked to you for 12 marks mensuration will be there for 10 marks statistics and probability will be for 11 marks so total 80 marks paper will be there so by considering all these things you have to do a preparation you have to prepare all the chapter in a nice manner because questions from each and every chapter will be asked to you here it is the exam pattern for science see the entire science is divided into five parts you can see see the first unit is chemical substances nature and behavior it will be for 25 marks so this is generally a chemistry part then world of living this is a biology chapters 25 marks natural phenomena is for 12 marks that is refraction reflection etc effects of current it is for 13 marks so this third and fourth unit stands for physics part that is for 25 marks so in all chemistry biology and physics will constitute 75 marks paper and last five marks will be there for environmental science that is natural resources that will be asked to you for five marks here is the exam pattern for social science now you can see it is divided into four units history geography economics democratic politics each unit is awarded 20 20 20 marks so total paper will be for 80 marks here it is a question paper pattern for math subject you can see it is divided into four sections in section a 20 multiple choice question for one mark each will be asked to you in question section b five questions for two marks each will be asked to you c six questions for three marks d four questions for five marks and in e three questions will be there for four marks each this is for case based questions so in all the paper will be for 80 marks now for all these things you need to solve all the examples from your textbook obviously while solving you have to take care of the deleted syllabus also now let us see the question paper pattern for science here also you will be able to see it is divided into five sections a b c d e in the first section a there are 20 multiple choice questions for one marks each in section b there are six questions for two marks but very important thing that you have to write down the answer between 30 to 50 words they are going to be very short answer type of questions then in section c 
it will be seven questions for three marks it will be short answer but 50 to 80 words in section d you will come across a three questions of five marks each long answer questions whereas in e you will come across a three questions of four marks each that is a case based questions again for all these things you have to prepare your entire ncrt textbook in a nice manner your concept should be clear and remember all these questions are equally divided between physics chemistry biology over here and five marks question will be asked to you from environmental science here it is a question paper pattern for social science here you can see it is divided into six sections a b c d e f this a consists of 20 multiple choice one marks each b consists of four questions for two marks each but they are very short answer type you have to write down the answer up to 40 words this is very important in section c there are five questions three marks each short answer type up to 60 words d four questions for five marks each up to 120 words a long answer questions e three questions for four marks each that is case based question you will be given some paragraph and on that basis you have to answer the question whereas in f there are going to be a five maps which we have to draw over there two things you have to locate from the history and three things from geography you are supposed to mark over here again for this you have to study the entire ncrt textbooks for history geography economics and democratic politics nicely which is going to be very important part now let us see a very important thing that is exam timetable this will be helpful to you to understand how to prepare all the subjects in between your exams see you can see the first paper will be on monday that is 27th okay it will be english language and literature obviously if you are following this uh, combination then only it is applicable then saturday 4th march you will be having science then on monday you will be having a uh, information technology 15th march wednesday you will be having social science 17th march friday you will be having hindi course b or hindi course a and tuesday that is 21st of march you will be having mathematics standard on tuesday over here that means your exam will start on 27th of february and it will end on 21st of march nearly for one month it's going to take place now if you observe carefully between this first paper and second paper of science you are getting total three and a half days time 27 will be say we can say half half day whereas you will get to 28 first and second third for the preparation of science so that time you can use it for preparation now between science and information technology you can see there is a lot of a gap near about eight days gap over here so that eight days gap you can use it nicely for preparation of your remaining subject like social science in the course b or mathematics standard you can divide that time at least four days in between you can use it for remaining subjects and last just before this information technology exam a three days you can use it for your preparation of information technology again when you come to this math course you will find what there is again a nice gap in between over here a gap of three and a half days so you can revise it once again means mathematics you will get a opportunity to revise twice in between the exams so this is how one can plan and go ahead with the preparation and score very nice marks in the exams here very important thing that you have to avoid a pressure for that you have to avoid comparisons then avoiding compare you have to avoid comparing yourself with others in terms of study progress level of preparation 
grades of the study hours etc then you have to rem for this is very important for parents you have to remember that each student is unique and their capabilities will differ and so their performance is also going to be different in exams say no to the social media unless your exams are over you are not supposed to use any of the social media applications because it consumes lot of a time which is really a wastage so as far as your exams are not over you should not use the any social media sites now during exam and even before exam also you have to remember while preparing a timetable you have to keep some time for relaxing yourself and unwind see you have to mix the subjects while studying of course this is obviously before the exam all the subjects are equally important and you have to give an attention to all the subjects so you should not get bored over here then you have to take a break after a study of 45 to 50 minutes for a 5 to 10 minutes over here this is again very important because if suppose you are studying a mathematics if you are try to solve a numericals in continuous manner for more than 1 hour you will find you are getting bored so after 45 50 minutes you give a small break during that you can hear a uh, music or you can go for a walk you can do a meditation for increasing your concentration but this will be helpful to you to recharge yourself and then again after that 5 to 10 minutes break with a new energy you can start with your studies for a uh, different subjects last but not least you have to eat healthy and you have to stay healthy here you can see a uh, dish comprising of fruits vegetables etc this is some sort of a healthy foods and if you go for this kind of a junk food over here so one has to avoid this junk food during your exam schedule you have to avoid aerated drinks as well as junk food you have to maintain your timetable also for the food and have a well balanced meals comprising of these vegetables cereals fruits and milk etc thank you and best of luck to all of you for your exams